So I'm building a Star Wars office, and inside the office space, we're building some stairs. So I'm doing a lot of fabricating with some one by two square tubing to build the stairs. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you what I'm doing with the fixture table and maybe show you some hints and tips because this is not your standard plain Jane weld frame. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna to be building one of the more complicated stairs in this entire staircase. I'm not gonna to touch this material until I'm basically ready to start welding. What I want is to let the table tell me where to position each one of these pieces. And then, to give you a little more insight on what's going on, this has gotta slip inside of that. I've given myself like a 16th of an inch around this whole thing, really tight. Almost to the point to where it's probably not going to fit. So I'm not gonna use this as a template, I'm gonna challenge myself to see, can I do it without it? I want to walk you through what's going through my brain as I do this. Everything has a purpose, and I'm not going to just go and throw stuff down here on the table if I don't need it. Wyatt has drawn these out for me. He's given me a zero, zero. And as you can tell, we have some 45s, and they need to be accurate. So let's start with this corner, and we'll give ourselves a reference surface to go off of. And I'm going to do that with fence blocks. The neat thing about fence blocks is that I can set these to hit any nominal dimension, which means I can make it land on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten as we go. I'm going to use these as much as possible, and if anything doesn't land on a nominal number, we'll use a different fixture. And this is going to be kind of a zero, zero. You can position the fence block this way if you want to, or you can position it this way. Now, because my tubing is tall, I'm going to try to keep the roll out of it. And one thing about a fence block is that it has a little bit of movement side to side, and that'd be fine if you're working on low material, something that's shallow and low. You're not going to see that little bit of wiggle. But I'm going to try to keep some of this twist out of this tubing. So I'm going to turn it like this. This gives me a perfect 90 degree corner. And then with every tube, I normally like two blocks. Now we're straight this way, now we need to go over here. You know what, I kind of screwed this up. Look at this, this is my zero, zero, but we're gonna come in the negative numbers, so I need to move everything forward a little bit. No big deal, we're just gonna slide everything up. So where's this piece at? Well, it's 16 and a half inches from zero. So let's put a stop there. I'm gonna use this guy. This is a tooth block. Now the neat thing about this block is that I can configure it in many different ways. I can put a riser block on here and make it a 90 degree fixture. Or I can have something that goes the other direction. Lots of different options. It's got a locking mechanism that locks this block together on eighth of an inch increments. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this sideways. So now I can be in this row and this block doesn't interfere. So the washer goes down first in the hole, the block sets on top and then I can move it to 16 and a half. So here's something interesting. When I pull the tape measure from this edge to this edge, that says I'm 1 16th of an inch under. Now here's something to take into consideration. What do I trust? Do I trust the table with machined teeth or do I trust the tape measure? Which one do you go off of? You can see that I'm on the half inch mark. So I'm gonna trust the block and the table holes as being more accurate than my tape measure. This is a perfect example of this tool being kind of sloppy. So now we got this corner going, we'll keep walking ourselves around, right? From zero here, I need to be six inches back. This block is just giving me a way to just confirm where I'm at. Okay, so that's done. So now we've come around the corner and now we get into this sharp point over here. Now this is what's tricky. This piece right here is important, this 45. Now I don't wanna use my cuts as the reference parts because these were hand cut on the grinder. These were not bandsaw cut. The lengths of everything here could be wrong. So what I would like to do is set up a uh, tooth block right here and right here on a 45 at the correct distance that Wyatt gave me at 20 and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a block over here off into space so I can pull that measurement. Let's take a look at this fence block. This fence block's got a couple different holes in it. Now, if you look at this one, these holes are close. They're on two inch centers. But when obviously you go to 45, that hole spacing gets wider, right? It doesn't fit. So this block is longer and it's got the appropriate holes to put it in on a 45. So that's what those extra holes are for. But I wanna use this to pull a measurement from. So it's gonna be in this grid pattern or grid line right there. So by putting it in this grid line, I'm not quite 
to the corner right here, but I'm, I'm close. Now with some simple math in CAD, we've determined that this is 3 16 So we've made those adjustments here and you can see this that's what the normal nominal dimension is and then that's what it is with that 3 16 removed from there we've already accounted for the misalignment so right now i can pick any grid line i want just kind of based on what i'm looking at here so maybe somewhere right there 20 and a quarter nailed it i hit this is a swinging pin so this pin locks the tooth block to the table this pin keeps it from swinging and keeps it on a 45. Now all I need to do, because I want another one that's parallel to it, is I'm just going to look at the numbers and look where it's matched and look what grid line I'm in. I'm going to just plop it in the hole. It's not going anywhere. I can't push it backwards because it's locked in with that block. I can't slide or move. The closer we move our fixtures to the weld, the less leverage the weld has to pull against our fixtures. So we're done with this one. And now we need to turn the corner. We need to start going up which is this piece right here. We need to be at 14 inches to there. So we're gonna use fence blocks because I can be on any number that I want. So we're gonna set this to 14 inches. Set that there. There's 14 inches. So this is going around a post that this gets saddled around and gets welded to. So this is a critical measurement, right? I just can't say this piece is good, this piece is good. Let's just fill it in with some metal right there. I'm at 29 and 8 from 0, oh, but I know my material is 1 inch. So I'm going to subtract 1 inch, so that's going to be 28 and an eighth. So I'm going to use this, 28 and an eighth. This is a new block. This is a short riser, and I'm going to use the short riser because this is going to get kind of cluttered into this corner, and having something short in here is going to be optimal. 28 and an eighth. That's a critical measurement. Obviously, I can't put a piece of tubing in here. <laughs> No big deal. This is something I want to talk about. I see a lot of people using 28 millimeter tables. The hole spacings are on four inch hole centers. Now that's a big problem. You saw me just move this fixture over two inches. Well, this part is only two and a half. So how do you put a fixture in here if your grid pattern's on four inch hole spacings? Your options are limited when you have wider hole spacings. I'm a hardcore advocate for the two inch hole centers. Please don't make the mistake of buying the four inch hole center tables. I know what you're gonna say, Jason, my table has a, an offset. I can go over one more. Your fixtures get so long because of your hole spacings that you can't put the fixtures in these small areas. If you're doing submarines or giant cell phone towers, and your things are long and big, yeah, the four inch hole spacing probably not gonna affect you that much. But if you're doing things like this, the two inch hole spacings are a must. So now we got this piece to do, that guy right there. We know he's set at 12, so we, we're gonna put a fence block right there. And because I'm on 12 inch dimensions, I'm gonna put the fence block lengthwise so that I can clamp to it. Last but not least, this 45 right here. We've got a layout of 14 and 9 16 once again, I'm gonna set a block in here so we can measure 14 and 9 16 So you're gonna say, Jason, what do you do? Your tooth blocks are only an eighth of an inch increments. Well, not anymore. To get the 16th of an inch measurement, you're gonna use the 16th of an inch washer. But when you look at them side by side, you really can't see a difference, except for, if you look at them real close, the teeth are misaligned. So we've shifted the teeth over to get you that 16th of an inch. Okay, got my last pieces set up. As you can tell, does that look like chaos? A little bit, but it looks structured. So now the next thing I wanna do is all the blocks that are on dimension, which is a nominal number, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna back it up with another block, like this. And leave myself that one inch gap in there so I can just drop my part in. This still gives myself a lock in. See, nice and tight like that. Keeps the wiggle out of it, stands it up straight. The next thing we wanna talk about is positioning and putting the material into place. I like to space the material up off the table. And because this is kind of small, short, stubby material, two inches, I'm gonna space everything up half of an inch. These are magnetic shim blocks. This is my super set and I like to use the half inch so you can combine quarters, two quarters together, you can make a half. You can stack some eighth of an inches up there. But realistically, we just need to get the material up off the table. And why? First reason, if I'm gonna come over here to this joint, I know I'm gonna be welding a downhill right here. So I'm gonna put this little guard, the spatter table protector right here so I can weld all the way down to the bottom. If this was touching the table, I'm gonna stop a half of an inch short so I don't weld this to the 
table. So by lifting it a little bit, all the way to the edge. The next thing to consider is the table gets yucky, which means it gets dirt, grit, grime, from sanding and weld spatter, the BBs just kind of roll all over the table. And I don't want to have to clean all that stuff off in between every setup. So if I have 10 of these things to do, I'm going to just want to plop material in here by keeping a clean reference spot that's only an inch tall. I just have to make sure that's clean and that's clean. It's just much faster to space it up off the table a little bit. So what I'm going to do is just going to go around the table and plop the shims down. Now I can rearrange these later if they're in the way, but I just kind of like to get them uh, in a rough position. All the shims are set up. Now the real fun begins. We get to check my saw work. All my parts are labeled. So 16 and a half goes in here. Six, 18 and a quarter. So as I start laying the pieces in, I did notice that this one funky long piece I screwed up on and it's an inch too short. That's not a big deal because the table saved me from making a mistake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recut one of these real fast and plop it back into the hole. This piece fits much better. I can fiddle with it a little bit. I can put a weld bead in there all the way around. I think that's gonna be much nicer. And that's one of the cool things that I like about setting the fixtures up this way is that I know the tube is in its correct place and I can manipulate the corners and get the joints looking good, even if the miters are off a little bit. The other thing change I made is that this fixture that I put in earlier, I really didn't like its position. It really kind of blocks this corner. So I've removed it completely and I've replaced it with a 7 8 shim. And now what I'll do is I'll clamp this entire system together. I can clamp this way and I can clamp this way and that will hold this whole corner 90 degrees on that fence block. But other than that, what I gotta do is clamp everything down. I'm just gonna put one clamp on here, probably right in the middle is all I need. But you have to make sure you put a shim underneath of this, because if you don't, we're gonna bow this tube. It's gonna push down, and then as soon as we release it later, it's gonna wanna spring back and make this whole weldment all warped. And then anywhere where I can put a fixture on the fillet, I'm going to do that. I want to weld this outside corner first and I've blocked it with this fixture. So what I'd like to do is just set it back an inch and put a spacer in between these two pieces. All I got to do is just move this back a hole. So if I just go back an inch, clunk, there's one inch and then these are an inch. See how that works. Now I've got myself a little bit of wiggle room in that corner to put a weld in there. Can never have too many clamps. I'm gonna take a little bit of E-Weld 4, and then I just missed the fixtures and clamps just for any little spatter. I doubt we're gonna have any problems, and then this stuff will evaporate and you won't even see it, and it leaves no residue behind. I think I'm ready to weld. I'm just gonna stay in one joint and weld it all there, and then I'm gonna move to another one. I'll catch up with you when I have this entire thing welded out. Okay. It's a shame I only have one of these to do because I got more time in setting up the fixture than I do welding. So I'm just going to let it cool just for a little bit. I typically take them out right after I've welded them, but this one's a little bit scary. So I'm going to leave it in here till it cools and then we'll flip it over and then we'll weld the other side that I missed. Okay, so here's the cutout. Let's just see how I did. Drum roll, please, please, please. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> there you go, I just knocked the end loose. Look how nice that fits. I mean, come on. That just goes to show you how square it is too when you can push it from one side of the weldment to the other, right? Push it all the way through. Major win, Jason doesn't have to do any cutting or grinding. Yes, 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 it's a good day when the grinder does not have to come out. All that little extra time setting the fixtures being meticulous on my clamps saves me from having to go back and redo my work. I think we can expand on this discussion a little bit. So I'm inviting you to join me at the forum. I'm gonna create a post on how would you make this funky thing if you didn't have a fixture table and how long would it take you to make it? It'd be interesting to know how you guys would solve this problem and I'd like to see you guys there.